Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video of the week where we look at trying to get you to finish in the top 5% globally. And we do that by discarding about 90% of the players that are available in the FPL and just looking at the other 10% and I'll try and guide you through and suggest which players are maybe worth getting in or getting rid of that we have to choose from. As we look at the players on the screen they tend to have a white background but there are six other coloured backgrounds they may have. They are as follows. Yellow means they're new to the system this week. Green player is a good buy, which means they're good this week and quite probably the next few weeks as well. Grey players are bench fodder. We get them in because they're cheap and they can sit on your bench. The idea being if they need to come in because one of your players is suddenly injured or something, then at least they're going to get you a couple of points. You want to try and avoid having any more than three grey players. So three's the max pretty much. Blue means they're sellable soon. So if you're looking for players to bring in, you don't want to buy a blue one. And we're not saying sell them now, but very soon we are going to sell them. Orange is sellable now. So if you want to buy a player that's green or yellow, think about targeting one of your orange players if you've got them. And red is a player you want to sell now. Now, game week 10 is a very popular game week, it seems, in the community for wildcarding. If you've not wildcarded yet and you're a you want to freshen things up in your team or there's quite a few players you want to get in, this is a good game week to do the wild card. If you do wild card, I suggest you buy in yellow players and green players as much as possible. Don't buy the reds, don't buy the oranges, don't buy the blues. And if you want to buy up to three greys, that's fine. And white players are fine. If a player's still got a white background, they're a perfectly solid player and they're fine to have. Hopefully that all made sense. And now we're going to start by whizzing through as quick as I can reasonably how the players did last week and then what our plans are for this coming game week. We start by seeing how the goalkeepers scored. So that's how the main six goalkeepers scored. They got an average of 3.8 between them. And then there's three other cheaper goalkeepers. They didn't do very well at all, an average of 1.3. Regarding the defenders, the expensive pace of defenders averaged 9.4. That's assuming you had two of these. The cheaper pated defenders only got 2.8 and then there is actually a third pated defender as well and they actually did okay. They averaged 9.4 if you had two of these. But that's because Botman, Bear and Anson didn't play. Now as always when we go through this we see that it's the midfielders and the forwards that you want to target. They're the ones that get the points generally. So the midfielders, the expensive midfielders, they did quite well. Look, if you had two of these you would have averaged 5.8. The cheaper page of midfielders, they averaged 10. And then there is a third page as well, which are largely bent sitters. They would have got 4.6 if you'd had two of these. That's 4.6 average. Regarding the forwards, the expensive forwards, they mostly did all right. Darwin, we were expecting him to not start, but come on. And that's what did happen. But he still managed to get an assist. That was nice. I'm assuming you would have played one of these. That was an average of six points. And then I assume, just for the sake of looking at averages, you'd have one of you'd have had one of these as well. They've got an average of 4.3. And now we get to look at what we're going to do for this coming game week 10. Now for the goalkeepers, Edison's 5.6 away to Man United. If you're looking to bring in a keeper, I definitely wouldn't bring him in. Pope, solid keeper, 5.5. If you had to have one of these two, I would definitely go Pope. Onana... It's a shame Man United do have some nice fixtures, not this coming game week, but after that. But they've been very bad defensively. Neto's on here simply because I've got these ordered by price. But he's at home to Burnley this week, which is actually quite a nice fixture. And then Flecken I've got as sellable. Their fixture run just coming up just isn't very nice. So if you're wildcarding and you've got Flecken, absolutely worth getting rid of him. And then Johnston for Palace, not so easy this week, but they do have some nicest fixtures coming up. And then for the cheaper keepers, Pickford is worth getting rid of. They just don't have nice fixtures and they've had one clean sheet out of nine games so far. Ariola's only 4.2 and he's absolutely worth getting. Now don't take a minus four to get him in, but if you've got two free transfers, don't know what to do and you've not got Ariola, it's worth bringing him in. If you're wildcarding, it's probably worth having him. Another keeper that's worth having, but I've not made him green, is Turner for Forest 4.1. So Ariola and Turner together, they're a good combination because they're nice and cheap. Regarding defenders, lots of green for defenders and midfielders this week. So Trent is still a good buy. Got some very nice fixtures coming up. 
but he is very expensive. Trippier is still a very good buy. He's got some nice fixtures coming up, but he can get score points anywhere. He can get an assist in any game, get bonus points in any game. Robertson's going to be out for a while. If you've got him, sell him. White, now, a bit controversial because he's quite expensive. However, he does get 90 minutes every time. If you've got enough money, you don't know what to do with it. White's a good option. White's in my team, but that's because I haven't got Haaland, so I could afford to have him. But Saliba also seems to be getting 90 minutes every game, and he's cheaper than White. Pedro Porro is a very good attacking defender. Hasn't got the greatest fixture on coming up. They got their away to Palace, which could be a clean sheet. Home to Chelsea, not so likely there. And Chelsea are good at defending. Away to Wolves, Wolves have been good. Home to Villa. So may not get any clean sheets in the next few weeks. May get one or two attacking returns. So I've not made him green, but he's absolutely fine to have and to keep. And if you're on a wild card, he's a right to buy, but he is quite expensive. And then we've got Cash. He's still green. Villa's next three fixtures are still very nice. Cheaper pace of defenders. Estupanan is sellable. So if you're on a wild card, you may not want to get him in. There's a remote chance, it seems, very remote chance he may play this week, but probably not. I think he's expected to be back either next game week against Everton or Sheffield United the week after. So in a couple of weeks' times, assuming he's fit and playing, lots of teams will be bringing him in and his price will be going up. So if you're on a wild card, you may want to bring him in and just have him on your bench knowing that in a couple of weeks you will play him. However, it's always dodgy buying an injured player. He's injured at the moment because sometimes they have setbacks. So he would be a sub waiting to happen, potentially. A Kanji, I've marked him as sellable. He got red carded, so he's going to miss the next game. They don't have a great run of fixtures. We never know for sure which defenders Pep's going to play. So he's fine to get rid of. Anson for Palace, he's still all right. Udogi. He got subbed at 55 minutes in the last game, so he missed out on the clean sheet points, so that was unfortunate. Gabriel have made green 4.7, seems to be playing. Perfectly good choice. And Burns 4.7 as well. Now, you could buy three Arsenal defenders, but I definitely wouldn't, because one, you're going to want some Arsenal attacking players, and two, when they do let a goal in, which they will in some games... It's just a bit rubbish because that's three defenders that can't get you clean sheets. And then the third page of defenders, Botman sellable. He's still injured, almost certainly going to miss this game week, I think. Colwell, although Chelsea don't have nice fixtures, he is nice and cheap. He's a great enabler. I thought about making him grey, but he's actually a bit better than a grey player because he will actually play sometimes. Pinnock, although Brentford did keep a clean sheet last game week, that was against Burnley, I think it was. They have difficult fixtures coming up. Fine to get rid of Pinnock. Simakas, currently four and a half million. Looks like he's going to get a good number of games between now and the end of the year. Liverpool have got some nice fixtures coming up. He's totally worth having. And I should have made those colours more green than I did there. A bit orange there. Sorry about that. Bayer and Anderson. So they both seem to be injured. They're not playing. So I've marked them as red. I'm not going to report on them after this week. But don't take hits to get rid of them if you're not wildcarding and they're in your team because they would have only sat on your bench anyway. So if they, if you've got those, they're going to be on your bench. If you can get rid of them, you may as well. But I am aware that they're very cheap and anyone you buy to replace them is going to cost you more money. Regarding the midfielders, Salah is still a good buy, albeit very expensive. But all but one game, I think, this season, he's got a return. And that one game was the game where they scored a goal and it's ruled off for offside, but it wasn't offside. So he should have had a return every game. Son, I've not made green because Tottenham's fixtures are okay, but they're not great, but he is quite expensive as well. Rashford, Man United should be green, but they've been so bad, he's not. Odegaard's green, so Arsenal have got some very nice fixtures coming up. Home to Sheffield United this game week, and then game week 12, home to Burnley. Two of the best possible fixtures. So Arsenal players tend to be green. Saka's 8.5 as well. Fernandez 8.3. If I had to have a United midfielder for myself, it'd be Fernandez. But there are so many great midfielders, I'd probably not have Rashford or Fernandez. And Madison 8.1. He's a good player. Seems to get on average maybe five points a week. And then Martinelli. We took him out a couple of weeks ago because he was injured and not playing. And then he scored and he's back. Looks like Jesus might be injured now as well. So Martinelli's chance of getting more minutes has increased. 
so I've had to reintroduce him. He's yellow because he's technically a new player, but if he wasn't yellow, I'd probably make him green. So he's perfectly all right to get. Foden 7.6. He's white because Man City don't have great fixtures coming up. Bowen, West Ham have some very nice fixtures. He's a good player to have. He's very popular as well. Sterling at home to Brentford, so he might be all right this week, and Brentford do have defensive issues. But after this week, he's not great, and there might be other midfielders you'd rather have. But if you have Sterling and you want to keep hold of him, that's fine as well. He's certainly not orange. Diaby's only 6.7. Villa have three very nice fixtures coming up. Embrema at 6.7. Away to Chelsea this week, home to West Ham, then away to Liverpool, home to Arsenal. So three of the next four fixtures aren't great. And then Matoma's green. Brighton have now finished their bad run of fixtures. They're now in for a good run of fixtures. Loads of people will be buying Matoma. He's absolutely worth getting. On the third page of midfielders, we have Ward Prowse at 6.3. Possibly quite expensive if you're going to put him on your bench, but if you're playing him, that's fine. He's an interesting pick because he can score against any team. He's a bit like Trippier in that you kind of need to play him every week if you want to get the points, obviously. But because he will get points from free kicks, from corners, from penalties when they arrive. And that can happen against any team. So he's not going to probably get as many points as Bowen. But he ticks along nicely and he is cheaper than Bowen. And then Gibbs White and Neto are both 5.8. I've not put Neto as grey because he's a bit better than bench fodder. He keeps returning four or five points most games it seems. Casemiro's grey been a bit disappointing. Palmer's new entry, Chelsea. I've not made him grey because he's a bit more than just bench fodder. Now, Chelsea's fixtures aren't great the next few. But if you're wildcarding, he's great to get in because he'll release money for elsewhere. And when you do need to play him and when Chelsea's fixtures are good, it looks like he's going to be a good player to have. Nikamba, 4.4. Nice, cheap enabler, Luton. Regarding the forwards, Haaland, I've not made him green. He's a very good player to have. Lots of managers are selling him to release money to buy Salah or somebody else. I sold him a couple of weeks ago. But the safe play is to have Haaland. If you get rid of Haaland, because so many managers do have him, you're risking falling behind. So I recommend having Haaland, even though it's not what I've done. Watkins, very good buy. Nice fixtures coming up. And he's scored more than Haaland so far this season. Jesus got injured last night. Time of recording, we don't know the extent of the injury. But if it turns out he is injured and he's going to be out for one or two weeks or longer, it's probably worth moving him on. If you're wildcarding, don't bring in Jesus unless you happen to hear before you press the button that he's definitely available this weekend. It's a shame because I I kind of wanted to bring him in this game week, but obviously I'm not getting now. Wilson for Newcastle, 7.8. Perfectly good player. Darwin, 7.4. As I think I mentioned earlier, we won expecting him to start. He didn't. He came off the bench. He got an assist. Home to Forest, away to Luton, home to Brentford. The next three game weeks, although he may not get 90 minutes in any of those, he's got a reasonable chance of assists and or goals. So he's a nice player to have. Hoyland, I took a gamble on him. He's not done anything yet. He's home to Man City this game week, but then he's away to Fulham, home to Luton, away to Everton. He could certainly get some points in those games, even though he's not managed points so far. And then Alvarez, 7.1. He's a solid player. He keeps getting points. Cheaper forwards, we have Solanke, 6.4. He keeps getting points. He only gets four or five points normally, six, seven, somewhere around that. But he's pretty consistent at every few game weeks getting the points in. And for 6.4, he's good. Visser, 5.9. They don't have very good fixtures coming up, but in a few game weeks, they do. So if you're not wildcarding and you have him, he's okay to keep. But if you want to move him on for someone else, that is also fine. Morris, bench fodder. Jao Pedro, bench fodder. But interesting thing with Jao Pedro is he has played every game so far. He's just not done an awful lot. But Brighton have had difficult fixtures. They are coming up to good fixtures now, so he may get something the next few game weeks. Adibayo, he scored at the weekend. But 4.8 bench fodder. Archer, 4.5 bench fodder. So hopefully you can see we've got enough grey players in this system where you can spread the funds around a bit and get 11 decent players, very good players, as your main squad and then the cheaper boys on the bench. 
Now the suggested bench order, and this is just a suggestion, and every week I look at what their fixtures are, what their form is, uh, whether they're home or away in my personal bias. I do take into account what various sites think they're going to score, but then I don't go along with that. I go along with what I think. So this is my suggestion, but you do whatever you like. Whatever keeper you see first that you have, I suggest goes on your bench. So if you have Turner, they're away to Liverpool. I suggest he's on your bench. If you don't have Turner, but you have Flecken away to Chelsea, suggesting he's on your bench. Pickford away to West Ham, bench. Onana, he is at home, but it's Man City. But of the keepers we've got less in the, left in the system, he's benchable. Johnson, he is at home to Tottenham, but for me, Tottenham seem to be the most confident team at the moment. They're doing very well. So if you had these five, if you had two of these five, I'd be playing Johnson. But if you had Johnson and another, then Johnson would be on the bench. I'm playing Edison, even though he's away to Man United. I think he's marginally got more chance of a clean sheet than Onana. Neto for Bournemouth, he's not He's going to be on the bench most weeks. However, he's at home to Burnley and Burnley are already struggling. Bournemouth are also struggling. Bournemouth do also leak goals. But if I had Edison and Neto, I would be very tempted to play Neto this week. And then Ariola. If you've got Pope and Ariola, I'd suggest putting Ariola on your bench. He's at home to Everton. I didn't have room to put Pope on. Pope is the ninth keeper. If you've got Pope, play him. Hopefully that made sense. As for the rest of your team, I'm suggesting if we get the right three players on the bench, obviously the other 10 will pick themselves. So what we do each week is try and guess what would the right benching order be based on a number of variables, basically. So if you have a Kanji, he goes on position three on your bench because he's not even playing. Casemiro may not play because of injury, but even if he does, he's playing against Man City, so bench him. And then Luton players, Nakamba on the bench, Adibayo on the bench. Pinnock for Brent, Brentford on the bench. Archer, Gibbs White, Anderson for Palace, that is. Visser for Brentford. Now we're getting to slightly better players. Now I'm suggesting Byrne goes on your bench. Hoyland for Man United, even though he's at home, he's against Man City. And I'm thinking the other players we have left are possibly going to do better. Udogi for Tottenham. Morris for Luton. So I'm saying if I had Morris and Udogi, I'd be tempted to play Morris. Morris does take penalties. I think they're away to Villa this week. But if they get a penalty, he'll get the points. If Luton happened to get a goal, there's a reasonable chance I think Morris would be involved. Whereas Tottenham away to Palace, Udogi did get taken off last game. So what I'm trying to say about that rambling is there is reasons behind the order I'm making these. Uh, Botman, who may not play anyway. Embuemo, Porro, Estupinan. Estupinand almost certainly isn't going to play, but just in case he does start and play, looks unlikely, he's worth having. Neto for Wolves, Colwell for Chelsea, Palmer for Chelsea, Yao Pedro for Brighton, Alvarez, Rashford, Gabriel, Foden, Ward Prowse, West Ham, Cash, Saliba for Arsenal, Solanke for Bournemouth, Darwin, Simicast, Sterling, Wilson, Fernandez, White, Madison. And there's an, another load of players that aren't on this page because you'll be playing them. And I can't imagine you've got 10 that I haven't shown you here. So hopefully that makes sense. If you disagree with this order, that's fine. One of these days I really should go back and see how close we were to getting the order about right. There are good players near the top of this page. And if it ends up that you're benching Darwin, all that means is you've got seven other very good attacking players that are better than Darwin. Regarding captain, who gets to wear the old mule hat this week? Well, I reckon Salah is a pretty good choice to wear the old mule hat. Is he going to be the most popular? I don't know. Probably not. It's probably going to be Haaland. But, oh, it's, this is a difficult week because last year Haaland got a lot of points against Man United at Old Trafford. Haaland is probably going to be the most captained. So if you want to captain Haaland, that's fine because it's safer but Salah's probably got more chance of getting points. Saka is also a very good call to be captain as is Watkins so any of these four are perfectly fine to be captain. For myself as things stand I'm probably going to go with Salah I didn't even have Haaland so it's easier for me but any of those are okay. If you want other options Sun away to Palace Sun does seem to be scoring okay at the moment 
and then as a bit of a punt you could go for Bowen. So I'd suggest if you can make one of these captain and if you've got two of these make one of these vice captain as well. If you don't have two of these then I suggest just choosing one of the green players that we showed you earlier. As for the background picture in case you're wondering this is the last 5% video before that silly Halloween thing that's coming up. I'm not into Halloween I don't really care for it but hey I don't know what else to do. There we have it that's the suggestions for game week 10 for the 5%. I didn't review my team I do that in a separate video and I'm hoping to do that later today but there's a chance it's going to end up being tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a good game week 10 and I do read your comments so if you have any questions feel free to ask them. Thanks, bye.